Hello and welcome to the ninth insight in the Baselight Beginner video series. Today is an exciting day. We're gonna have a look at the grading tools in Baselight. So if you've been following along with our previous insights, we've done a lot of work getting up to this point and now we can go ahead, add some grading layers and start to experiment with Baselight's grading tools. It's really important that when we get grading though, that we understand the layer order of the timeline, we understand what sort of operators we're seeing in the timeline, and we know some of those essential shortcuts and hotkeys so that we're grading fast and we know how to get things done. So we have a scene open here. This is a duplicate scene from our scene detect insight a few insights back. We've got this first shot here. Uh, how do we add a grade layer? Well, there's a couple of ways we can do that. The easiest way by far is with our cursor resting over our clip, uh, hit the keyboard shortcut P, and P creates our first grade layer. Let's remove this grade layer with Shift P, and let's add a grade layer using the Layer Manager, which can be found at the top right-hand corner of the Parameters view. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a grade layer here as well. So as you can see, the Parameters view up the top left changes, depending on whether I have my input strip or my grading layer selected. The first thing that we might notice when we create this grade layer is that Baselight creates layers top down, unlike lots of popular editing softwares that apply layers from the bottom up. So you might have expected this layer to actually come on top of this input strip here, um, but as you can see, if I continue hitting P on the keyboard, uh, Baselight actually creates layers top down, but that'll just take some time to get used to. I'm gonna click layer one, and we're gonna just look up at the parameters view up the top left hand corner. So first of all, uh, if we have a look over at this sub-panel, you can see that we've got a variety of grade operators that we can select. We're currently selecting the base grade operator, and you know that because we've got a yellow highlight around the base grade. If I select the video grade tool, for example, you'll see the yellow box uh, follows. Let's stay on the video grade tool for now because it's a tool that might be familiar to Resolve users. You can see over in the main display, we have three color wheels and three sliders. So as you can imagine, if we go ahead and adjust these, they will operate very similar to other grading software like Resolve. This is targeting the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. Uh, once we make adjustments here, we can go ahead and reset them using the reset button. And at any point, we can actually toggle between the color wheel and a set of RGB sliders. You see natively that these are ganged together, so the R, G, and B sliders are all moving as one, but the gang function can be toggled off using these buttons here. So now you can see that we can adjust the midtones of the image with our red channel, green channel, and blue channel respectively. So as you can see, hitting the reset button here and toggling back to the color wheels, this is a very similar set of color wheels to what you can find in Resolve. When we make an adjustment in any of these grading operators, so for example, say we up the midtones of our image, so say we crank this quite high, first thing to notice is that the text has turned blue. So this means that this grading operator is active. You can have multiple grading operators active within any given layer. So if I went up to the base grade layer, for example, and cranked my balance color wheel all the way to purple, and I'll really, really crank that, Cool. You can see that we've got two active grade operators. If I wanted to bypass this grade operator, I can do so with the bypass toggle. And you can see that we have a cross hatching come across this grade operator. The hotkey for that is Command Shift F11. Let's demonstrate that on the base grade tool. I'll select the base grade tool and hit Command Shift F11. And you can see that we've removed our purple base grade operator when we do that. So what's the best way to reset? A grading operator. Say that I've decided this purple hue isn't very nice and I want to clear it. Well, you can do it a couple of ways. The first way is you right click your grading operator and you go reset operator entry. I'll hit command Z to undo. The shortcut key for resetting your grade operator is command delete. We'll go back to the video grade. Now if we want to bypass the entire layer, not just the operator, there's a couple ways we can do that as well. If we go up to the bypass toggle here, we can bypass the entire strip. And as you can see, our grade vanishes. You can see that the layer has some cross hatching to indicate that it's been bypassed. The keyboard shortcut for this is Command F11. And we can toggle on and off as required. Let's reset our gamma with the reset button. And let's explore some of the other grading operators within our grade layer. We'll jump to the base grade tool this is a base light specific grade tool. And you can see that we have three sort of color wheels, very similar to the video grade. Also down here, we have uh, the flare control, the contrast control, and the saturation control, along with some pivot controls. 
This graph down the bottom here is a visual representation of the changes that you make. So for example, if I go ahead and change the contrast and change the flare, you can see that this graph is reflecting the changes I make. Just gonna reset the flare and contrast here. You'll also notice up the top here, we've got two tabs. We have the dim balance light tab and the dark balance bright tab. You can see when we toggle between these two tabs that the left panel and the right panel change from dim and light to dark and bright, which is specified in the tab naming here. These tabs can actually be changed to a broad range of things. So if I change that to contrast, you see we have a contrast slider. I could change it to a saturation slider. I'll leave it on dim for now. So let's talk about the tool that doesn't change swapping between these two tabs, which is the balance tool. So the balance tool is a really easy way to adjust exposure in baseline. Now, the way to actually change exposure isn't very transparent from the get-go, which is classic baseline. You can see if we go ahead and edit this text field, so if I change this to two and hit enter, you can see that we've increased our exposure and you can see this curved bar beside the wheel has increased. If I change that down to one, enter, you can see it's halved. There's a really easy way to adjust exposure without editing the text field. And it's a little bit counterintuitive at first, but it gets really easy to use once you understand it. So if I go ahead, rest my mouse over this area, click down with left mouse button and drag in a circle to the right, sort of like I'm winding a clock, you can see my exposure increases. If I click and wind the clock anti-clockwise, you can see that my exposure decreases. So these circles that you make can be very big or they can be very small. But you can see the bigger you get, the faster the adjustment. If I want to reset my exposure, I can do that with the reset button here. This circular motion applies to a lot of grading operations in baseline. So for example, if we go down to the contrast text field, click and drag clockwise, the contrast increases. And if we drag anti-clockwise, you can see the contrast decreases. Again, a little bit counterintuitive when you first do it, but it gets a lot easier once you've done it a few times. So again, heading over to the saturation, I'm gonna click in this text field and circle clockwise. I'm gonna click and circle anti-clockwise to decrease the saturation. And I'm gonna reset it with the reset toggle. Okay, so jumping back up to the balance, we can adjust our exposure with the slider. We can also adjust the general color in the image, which is a really nice and easy way to add a tone to this image. So if we wanted a cooler scene, we can drag it towards blue. It looks like the light has changed in a very organic way. And in my opinion, it's one of the best features in the base grade tool. I can up my exposure using the balance tool a little bit more. And I'm gonna increase my contrast by clicking and dragging in a clockwise circle as well. Okay, so my image is looking a little bit more contrasty. The dark and the bright wheels, and the dim and the light wheels respectively, these adjustments are restricted to certain lightness bands. So for example, if I adjust the lightness slider and drag this up, and if you have a look at the RGB parade down below, you can see the bottom half of the image is not being touched at all by these adjustments. I'm gonna reset that here. And same with the dim. If I click the dim slider and drag this up, and down, you can see that the top half of our image is not being touched. And I'm gonna reset this here. So the dim and the light and the dark and the bright tools, um, I would definitely recommend you experiment with them. The last thing that I wanna cover in base grade, um, as you can see, there's a contrast and saturation. There's also this tool called Flare, uh, which I love. The Flare adjusts the black cutoff point. And the easiest way to sort of show you what that is, is by, is by showing you. So I'm gonna click in the flare text panel and I'm gonna drag clockwise. And you can see it sort of lifts my black point. And I'm gonna go ahead and drag it anti-clockwise. And you can see it brings my black point down. This is a really useful way to finesse your blacks. And again, one of my other favorite parts of the base grade tool. So that's a little overview of the base grade tool. And we've sort of talked a little bit about the video grade tool as well. We won't touch on the film grade tool, but just know that certain colorists uh, prefer using certain grading operators, or they may use different grading operators for different situations. It depends on your colorist style, what seems intuitive to you and how the images react to those grading operators. You can use more than one tool at the same time in a single layer. Baselight recommends you don't do this, especially when you're starting off. So Baselight's recommendation, I'll hit Command Delete 
clear this grading operator, is to stick with one grading operator per layer. So if I wanted to now do a video grade adjustment, I would hit P on my keyboard, and then I could go ahead and make a separate adjustment on a separate layer. The last thing I wanted to cover is the difference between a grading layer and a matte operator layer. And I also wanted to share a very quick uh, keyboard shortcut with you that'll really help a lot when navigating your timeline. I'm gonna go ahead and make a purple adjustment on the gamma, a very strong adjustment. I'm gonna add another grade layer with P and I'm gonna create a shape. Um, so you don't really need to worry about this too much. I'm gonna go ahead and create a box shape. And in this box shape, I'm just going to make another gamma adjustment using the video grade tool. So I'll push that towards yellow green. Okay, also I'm just gonna go ahead and reduce this feather so we have a nice clear box shape. So as you can see, we've got a few layers now on our timeline and we have a very interesting looking image. The one thing I wanted to point out here is that we can have strips attached to our shot that aren't actually grade strips per se. So this is a grade strip here, but if we go to our shape layer, this is a matte operator. Uh, you can't do any grade adjustments on this layer. And this shape layer is actually connected to this strip. Remembering that base light applies layers top down. This can be thought of as one single grade. This can be thought of as one grade, and that can be thought of as one grade. I found this really confusing when I started learning base light because I thought that the shape layer was connected to layer two. The thing I wanted to highlight here is that matte operator layers, like a shape layer, are connected to the layer beneath rather than the layer above. So for example, if I clicked layer three and bypass this layer with command F11, you can see that the shape layer is connected to my layer three. Again, I found this quite confusing when I started, but that's just something to get used to, especially while you learn the software. You can already start to imagine that the timeline can get really busy when you start having more of these non-grading layer strips on your timeline. So for example, if I click my shape layer and edit the feather using the mat tool, go ahead and feather this out a little, you can see that now we have another strip on our timeline, uh, which again, if we click layer three, command F11 to bypass, these are all connected. We'll unbypass that with command F11. This leads me to the final tip of the day, which is a layer navigation shortcut key. So you can navigate up through these layers to your original shot using the keyboard shortcut key up arrow and down arrow. So if I hit the up arrow on my keyboard here, you can see that we can toggle through all of our layers to go back to our starting shot. And you can see that our cursor is on layer five. So we're just looking at our initial shot here. As we step down, you can see all of our grade layers being reintroduced. The keyboard shortcut key, which I wanted to share with you, is page up and page down next to the numpad. Page up will jump you up layers, and page down will jump you down. But as you can see, it skips all matte operator layers. So it jumps from grade layer to grade layer. If I use the up arrow, it would toggle through each of my matte operators. But if I use page up and page down, it skips them. So that's a really useful tool for navigating, especially when you've got a more complicated timeline. Okay, and that's where we'll finish it for our first insight on the grading tools. I know this can feel like a lot, especially coming from softwares like Photoshop or other editing softwares where the layering system is the opposite. Don't worry, it just takes a little bit of practice to get your head in the game. We can dig into grading tools specifically in maybe another series. Hopefully that's given you enough information to jump into Baselight, create some grading layers, and have a play around with the base grade video grade tools. Have fun, and we'll see you in the next Insight for some more grading tips and tricks. For MixingLight.com, I'm Luke Ross. <laughs>